Why, hello and welcome to the PHP. I'm Booker. That's Perez. How are you? I'm good. This week, a lot of stuff in addition to this, but we're going to start off mentioning that we're talking again, unfortunately, about Meghan Markle and her latest offensiveness. Everybody's <laughs> exploiting Britney Spears. Scott Disick, out of control. Courtney Kardashian, also out of control. Wendy Williams, very out of control. And like I said at the very beginning, a lot more. But how are you? I'm well, thank you so much. How you been? That's it? What happened in your life in the last seven days? <laughs> you didn't ask that. You asked how I was. I told you I'm oh. good. Uh, let me see. I went to Modest Mouse over the weekend, oh, saw fun. that band play. Yeah. I'd never seen them play before. I, and I was pleasantly surprised how so really good they the are. I'm so out of the loop. I don't even know about show. Where did they play? Um, downtown at the Ace Hotel Theater. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was cool. They had that song, all right, already, we all float on, on that all one. All right, yep, float that on, that's song. their big hit, yeah. yeah. We Are Between's their new song, which is really good too. It really sounds uh, really 80s, kind of. Everything sounds 80s again. It's weird how the 80s have come roaring back. Your station plays the, their new song? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, what else did I do? I had a dog birthday party yesterday. That was fantastic. I had nothing to do with it, but you know, it happened. Uh, that's about it. Well, that's cool. I went, um, <coughs> I went to pick Sorry. up some presents with my kids for my daughter's fourth birthday. So I like to do this thing where I have the siblings buy presents for their own brother or that's sister. Nice. That's uh, nice. So her birthday's next week. And then we also went to the beach for a birthday party, um, which was sort of nice, but like, I'm that, I'm the dad, right? So like, don't get in the water. Cause it was freezing <laughs> and it was so like, the water was freezing and there was no sun out either. It was a, it was overcast, chilly weekend in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So I'm like- Fall is here in LA, which is pretty wild. I am my mom, you know, but um, I think I'm also just like, I'm going through a funk because I don't know. I don't think we're back to normal yet. <laughs> and it's like, you're realizing that. And it's like, this is just so depressing. Like, yeah. I just want to be back to normal. Yeah. It may be a while. I, uh, well, I read this morning that the Pfizer CEO said, we're not going to be back to normal for another year. Mm hmm they said that a year ago too. Yeah, I know. Like what the hell? Oh, whatever. <laughs> but it's not all like gloom. There was a moment of glimmering sunshine. Jay Leno, remember him? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Helen's dad worked for Jay. Oh, cool. What did he do again? For he his worked set? at the Tonight Show. I mean, doing what? Like advertising or something like no, that? No, no. He was the head of the page program for many, many years. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, well... Uh, Jay Leno mentioned me on his new game show. Cool. He's got a show called You Bet Your Life. And um, there was like a question. It was something like, what thing is this pose named after? And then it was like three different types of snakes. And the fourth option was Perez Hilton. <laughs> <laughs> that happened to me once on uh on what's the Sunday night show that was really hot for five seconds online and everybody played online? it. Online? Yeah. Oh, it was uh it was like a multiple choice thing and they gave away a million dollars or something every week. Oh, oh remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. was like maybe a couple of years back and everybody was playing it for yeah, I remember this. I remember this. I know. But I was one it. of the questions too. It was like which person uh was not an mtv vj you know and i was like you know it's like ananda lewis chris booker and i'm like oh my god i made it like cool <laughs> it's I a think, highlight of my career i, I think forget, i put it on my instagram <laughs> i forget what that was called but the, i don't even think that's around anymore I what was it called I, something trivia in it something trivia in it i think i can't remember anyways so that was that I, I, I was thankful for that. Thank you, Jay Leno. You should have me on the show as a contestant. I'm not even joking. I, I love <laughs> you game shows. You want to win some money. <laughs> well, and I love game shows. I've been on like three or four. 
I forget how many. Um, anyways, God, it's I'm old. Your life flashes before you, especially when you've done so many things. Mm -hmm. um, people got really heated over our conversation last week on Shit's Creek. Oh my God. Did you see all of the back and forth on Twitter? It was great. I mean, I still stand behind <laughs> everything I said. And like, well, well so, you so, weren't wrong. You watched two episodes and yeah. you just didn't think it was great in two episodes. And yeah. everyone's telling you watch more because it's a great, great show. I mean, think about the Emmys last year. It swept every actor one. It won every category. I mean, it's that good of a show. It's very funny. I mean, maybe it gets better as the seasons go it's, on. No, it's but... not maybe. It does. All right. You just can't. I, I said on Twitter, my favorite uh, retort was, Perez is the kind of guy that likes to judge the art in a museum from the street. Okay? Like, you need to see the whole thing. You need to see all of the art. Anyways, people that did not listen to our show did not hear that I was watching it on a plane, and they did not have season one. They only had three episodes and by the, the way isn't three. that the weirdest thing in the world like who gives you that option like what season fucking two that makes no sense they only had the <clears> first <throat> three episodes of season two hmm. and i i was like all right i want listen i watched more than one i watched two episodes and after two i was like okay i don't need to watch episode three like I watched, I gave it, I gave it more than one chance and it wasn't bad. I never said I did not enjoy <laughs> Let's it. Let's move on. It's a phenomenal it show. You just Whatever. need to watch it all. <laughs> Why would I watch it all if I was not, if I did not well, resonate? As, as I said last weekend, that's like picking four random minutes from a movie and right, judging whatever. the Anyways, entire movie on those four random minutes. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of television, um, very sad news that actor Willie Garson, who played mm. Stanford Blanche on Sex in the City, he was also on that show White Collar with Matt Bomer that did run a long time. Um, I never watched it, but I did. It, I like that show a it lot. Had a, I had a following um, mm -hmm. that ran. I for, loved it for six seasons, which you know, in showbiz, a show for six <laughs> seasons is a long time. That was like one of those USA shows. Like if yeah. you ever wonder who's the person watching those USA shitty shows, it's this guy right here, you know, well, you that just suits and everything else. Ton of television. It's funny that you say that. I don't have a TV on in my house ever during the day. And we typically watch one to two shows a night and that's it. So it's just, you know, I just watch something every day. That's all that I do. But I never have a TV on during the day, ever. It doesn't come on till eight or nine at night. And then you go to bed late. All right. Well, you don't have kids. You don't have kids. That's true. Yeah. Well, I don't it, stay up late either. I mean, we're in bed by 10, 1030. So. so he passed away. Very sad. 57 years young. Um, he died of pancreatic cancer. Mm. And it. I did not know this until after he died. He was not gay. I just assumed he was. <laughs> he he played that part on Sex in the City so convincingly that it wasn't a caricature. You know, it wasn't like yeah. he's acting gay. I just I thought he was really gay. Huh. So well, you said his name, and I watched Sex in the City, and I was like, really? That was his name on Sex in the City? Or Stanny, you know, Stan. Stan. Yeah, it was not, it Stan? I thought it was just Stan. No, I, not fuck. I can't remember. Not Stan. Whatever Miranda, name, Miranda whatever had, name you said Miranda, didn't sound right to me. Miranda had a husband named Steve. There's Steve, mm. uh, and then there's Stanford or Stanny. Hmm. Anyways, uh, that was very sad. Um, and Sarah Jessica Parker did not um, speak on it for days. Uh, until she finally did. And she said something along the lines of sometimes silence makes the, the biggest noise or something like that. Um, they knew each other before Sex in the City, even, you know, they were friends for a long time, as was Kristen Davis and um, Kim Cattrall, I don't think said anything about it. But then again, she hates Sex in the City, <laughs> apparently. Or, I thought everybody... I did see a, a comment from her. You, you did? Oh. I want to look that up. I believe that I did. Oh, let me look it up. Said something quick. that he was part of the family. And I believe it was Kim. I don't think it was uh, 
It wasn't no. Sarah Jessica. You sure? I'm, I mean, I'm almost least, positive I saw something and I was like, oh, that was nice of her. At least not on Instagram. Maybe she said it somewhere else, but all of the other ladies have spoken up on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, whatevs. Maybe I'll, let's just say she said something. Um, uh, over the weekend on television, uh, all over the world, the Global Citizen Festival aired. Mm. And Meghan Markle and Prince Harry were in New York for that, but they also decided to do some um, meetings and take uh, some time to uh, do some, I wouldn't even call it charity work, but they, you know, met some kids in Harlem and uh, they went to the 9-11 Remembrance uh, yeah. place. Um, and a lot of people, once it, this, it's fascinating to me that the majority of the people who send hate to Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, they direct that hate mainly to her. Mm -hmm. He does not get as much hate as she does. And there has to be a reason for that. Some might say it's racial. Some might say um, she's more annoying than he is. Some might say it's misogynist. Some might say it's both or all of that. Um, you know, like I just like uh, it's, 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 it's upsetting and draining to me. Imagine what it must feel like to her. You know, people were picking apart Last week it was, oh, she was wearing all these this jewelry on the cover of that magazine. This week it's, she went to see children in Harlem and was dressed in such expensive clothes. I just saw her in like uh, heavy, heavy coats and it's like 70 degrees in New York. And I was like, what is she wearing? It's very hot in New York. So that was the fashion. only thing I, 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 but I didn't think it was, yeah, fashion, whatever. But um, no, here's the thing. And you got to understand this. They bowed out of no no no, no. That they, is not true okay they don't Let want me, anything to do no, with being royals but not, now they're they're still being royals that's the thing but i'm just telling you that's the thing you don't want to do this but you no, still want the you still want the no, uh, what the dressings did, of it what they did not want and i understand this they did not want the palace to dictate their lives. They wanted to be able to make their own decisions for themselves as adults. That seems very reasonable to me. Yeah, they're now still being royals and doing royal shit. <laughs> but that's the thing. Like, you don't want to do it, but yet you go out and do it. It's no, just like, make up not, your mind. They want to do no. what they want to do with it. Yeah, that's what I, and, exactly right, what I said. But that's not how it works. Well, then they're changing how it works. Not really. People are like, fine, don't be a royal. We're done. Go away. That's what people are thinking. Like, but this is how royal things are done. You do it that way or you don't. And, yeah, and then I, they're out I, there I, doing it their way. And I, everyone's I, like, wait a minute, thought, time out. I thought you guys were done with this crap. I will say it was a little weird to see them. It was as if they were on a royal tour of New right. York and they're not are royals they're not royalty to us and there you and there you get the whole like why are these two making such a fuss about it's themselves like, i i totally think it's great to do charitable work but all of their stops on this tour were documented by the press it's like <laughs> You can do your charity work and not have it be a media moment every time i don't know that's I guess they're they're figuring it all out though. Okay, I'm trying. I find to... them annoying, and I think it's okay if other people find them annoying. Are you? Like, do you really truly find them annoying? Or yes, are you just saying that for attention? No. I, who am I trying to get attention from? Who? Uh, all I, of the people that hate them, which is a lot of people. First of all, I don't think anyone hates them. Oh, I mean, they don't know people, them. No, a lot of people hate. People them, find them her. to be annoying, which I do. They're like gnats. It's like go away. You didn't want to be a part of it, then go. Don't be a part of it. Like, get off my set. Like, I don't care. That's what people are thinking. That's all. I'm just telling you what it is. At the it is of, what it is. At the end of the day, this is also what it is. Two people trying to do good in this world 
simultaneously while making themselves money, which I see nothing wrong with because there's lots of people that just focus on making themselves money and not also focusing on doing good in the world. Mm -hmm. There are these two people trying to do good in the world that are constantly being attacked and criticized and overanalyzed for everything that they do. And that are incredibly annoying at it. <sighs> All right, let's keep it moving. <laughs> From Meghan Markle to Britney Spears, somebody else that is analyzed and some might say possibly too scrutinized. In 2021, there now have been five Britney Spears documentaries. Mm -hmm. The first one was that New York Times documentary, Framing Britney Spears. Mm -hmm. Then the BBC did one that I was a part of. Then last week, it was announced on Netflix that they are going to be releasing their Britney Spears documentary that comes out tomorrow mm -hmm. or Tuesday of this week, a day before Britney's next court hearing. Mm -hmm. Then like, haha, surprise after Netflix announced their documentary that comes out on Tuesday, the New York times announced that their sequel their follow-up. <laughs> There's a sequel. <laughs> yeah. It's called Controlling Britney Spears. That was coming out that night. So they made that announcement on Friday morning. Mm -hmm. Friday night, it was announced that it's coming out. And then also over the weekend, CNN released their own Britney Spears documentary. <laughs> really? Yes. Wow. Yeah. All of them interviewing insiders and having more information mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it makes sense because the New York Times, for example, that's the one that that's out already. Um, I haven't really seen much from the from the Netflix one because it's not out yet. Mm -hmm. The New York Times says that after their last documentary that came out earlier this year, that a bunch of whistleblowers felt compelled to speak out mm -hmm. and they gave them a bunch of information. Um, some of the uh, allegations discussed in the New York Times documentary is that Brittany was more than living under a microscope, that her father was looking and hearing everything, having access to her phones, her laptops, her house, according to the security person that worked for the security company responsible for all of this was wired so that da people could hear everything. Her father responded through his lawyer saying that the court and Brittany was aware of all of this. Mm -hmm. But still, your cat's driving me crazy. Oh, oh you hear it? Boo -boo. Get out of here. What's wrong with you your gotta, cat? You gotta go. She's, <laughs> this is, she's just so mouthy. She just is like this. She needs attention. Um, uh, I mean, even if you're aware that you're being recorded as part of your conservatorship, that would still upset me. That would still infuriate me. That would still make me not want to speak up or say anything or just what an awful way to live. Yeah. So there's that. And it goes back to something that I brought up. I think when we mentioned that these documentaries were being made you know Brittany in june of this year discussed how at least the new york times documentary made her feel awful and she did not like it mm -hmm. now there's all these multiple documentaries and like <laughs> i don't think she'll like it either yeah you know and it's like all of these people are truly just exploiting her for for money right well, I saw the, did you watch the trailer for the Netflix one? I mean, it's very pro Britney. It's a very, very free Britney people. Yeah, I get that. But that's what I've always said though. That anyone could present an agenda any way they want to present an agenda. They can make it look as if it's the, you know, the deck's loaded this way or it's that way. You can craft the story the way you want. And that's how these documentaries are typically done. So you'll see the New York Times one, which could be 
completely different from this new Netflix one. And the bottom line is back to what you said. <laughs> Who knows? I mean, nobody, nobody insiders inside my nuts, please. I mean, one of the, I don't know if I would describe it as a good thing, but one of the <laughs> things, um, at least with the New York Times new documentary controlling Britney Spears, the Netflix one is called Britney versus Spears. And I don't remember the name of the CNN one because I didn't watch that. Um, it wasn't just the father, you know, it was, um, there were other parties also involved. I think the name of one woman was like Robin Greenhill or something like that. Like there were many people involved in making Britney's life miserable. Mm. And, um, you know, it, it was this huge operation and the, even her bodyguards, they weren't, they really weren't just bodyguards. They were like prison guards too, you know, like, uh, awful. Her fiance, Sam Esgari, has spoken out about all of these documentaries on Instagram. He commented on somebody's post about the Netflix doc saying, I hope the profit from these docs go towards fighting against injustice. Yeah, I don't see that happening. <laughs> yeah, I think the uh, the profits are going to go to Netflix. Bottom line, yeah, and Hulu, where the, where the yeah. New York Times one is. And honestly, like, I don't even know if they're going to get that much ratings. Like you mentioned, there people might be experiencing, you know, Britney burnout, Britney fatigue. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 that's my sense right there. I mean, if we just look at our audience alone, I know they've tuned out from this conversation. They're so done with Brittany. They're just done. Um, I, and because it all goes back down to nobody really knows. So we're all, it's just, it's another show of speculation, speculation, insiders, bullshit. Uh, <laughs> I think that's, that's the crux of it. People are bored of it. They've realized that. Well, I mean, there were, they don't know. They were insiders because these people did speak on the record from yeah. her former tour manager to her former wardrobe stylist and right. other people, you know, and it doesn't mean that they're lying. It doesn't mean, it just means that they're it's just what they one saw. part. It's right. And it's one little part, little tiny sliver but, of what actually goes on. But if they saw something, they saw something, you right. know, but you know, the reality could be the complete opposite of what they saw. It, it just, no one knows. It's that's why this story is just, you know, we're beating a dead horse here. Well, it'll be interesting to see what happens in court this week. My prediction is that the conservatorship will remain in place. That's all of the indications that I've seen. Mm -hmm. um, that's what her lawyer, I think, is expecting. You know, I think actually that's what her lawyer wants. I don't it think it is what she, they just want. They wanted the dad out and they wanted someone new to oversee this. So. But it's weird that the lawyer and the dad was like, just let's just cancel it all together. Then. Yeah, <laughs> so, it's it's weird know. that the, it's weird that the lawyer does not want the conservatorship to end just yet. Um, Pot of gold. Yeah. Um, and that break that Brittany took from social media did not last long. She's mm -hmm. already back on Instagram and she revealed that she went to Palm Springs with her fiance and they had a nice time. Good for her. Happy for her, truly. Uh, you know, next week we'll be reporting that she's pregnant. I would not be surprised. All right. In more Netflix news, um, I don't like this. It leaves an unsavory taste in my mouth. Netflix has announced that they are making or have made and will be releasing a sequel to Tiger King. Not much is known about it, but Netflix did tease that that guy, Joe Exotic, is going to be on it. In fact, they put up a photo of him on their Twitter from jail, like on a jail phone behind glass. Now, you might know this. I don't know for sure, but I don't think that a prisoner is allowed to make money That's, while, yes, off while, of a crime while in prison well i don't know if that's true i think if you've been convicted of some sort of crime there's no way you you're allowed to profit from the crime now he could have just said i'm not making any money from this and i agreed to be a part of your special i'm not taking any loot 
That's got to be the situation. That, uh, and you know what? There's right. There's probably some. Yeah, I'll pat his, your back later exactly. on. Blah blah blah. There his, always is. His lawyer, I'm sure, is getting paid, and then something's will, happening. You're right. Yeah. You know, or they agreed to pay his legal bills so that he could try to get out of jail or whatever. I I just know. I know. You know. You. I, I'm the skeptic now. Like, there's zero chance that dude agreed to be a part of this without somehow feeling it's really worth his time, meaning money or that his lawyers are being, maybe that's it. Like I, I wouldn't say zero. I think it's just thirst. And I think that he knows that getting out and keeping himself relevant in any way possible is money down the line. You know what I mean? It's just more eyeballs on him. If there's no money now, there'll be money later. I guess. Um, but Carol Baskin, for one, is not happy about this and is definitely not a part of the sequel. She went on a big old rant about why would she take part in it? Because she was burned by the makers of it the first time around and blah, blah, yeah. blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> I mean, I guess I understand, but the weird thing is, is that like, not only was that Joe Exotic guy shady, but there were so many other shady people involved mm -hmm. yeah. and animal abuse and real crimes. Like so many of the people affiliated with Tiger King have also either, you know, faced legal consequences over the last 12 months or died or, I mean, there's a lot of material for a sequel, but still it's like all these shady mofos yeah the whole are, thing's a dirt bag circus yeah. and and that's the thing even when you look at the topic matter what it is like you've got animals that are caged up in these places where they should not be caged up i mean it's a bad look and even to make a sequel kind of makes you feel a little dirty too like hey what are you doing going in on this again you know we gave you a pass the first time but now you're trying to make some more money off of these animals that are still somewhere in a cage it just it smells of shit to me. <sighs> That's showbiz. <laughs> yeah, you're right. If there's a dollar to be made, someone will mine it. So Scott Disick, Kourtney Kardashian's baby daddy, has, I guess, pulled a Kanye in extreme. Scott Disick went and not only unfollowed Kourtney Kardashian, he also unfollowed all the Kardashians on Instagram. It should be noted that the Kardashians have begun filming for their new Hulu reality show. So the timing of that might be suspect. Yeah. Um, or he's just still going through it all. Poor guy. He's, he's all by himself now. He's not with his Poor girlfriend guy. anymore. The guy's a dope and he's famous for nothing. And he's banging young Hollywood every five seconds. I, I, I'm i sorry. I'm not going to really shed too many tears I for know. poor Scott got, Disick. The fucking got, guy has zero talent whatsoever and is famous. Got, yeah, he got real lucky and not only famous, rich, because he did rich, that show yeah. for so long. Yeah, syndication. So, But I'm not jealous. You know, I've got a good life too, and um, jealousy will get you nowhere. Mm. But speaking of jealousy, part of me does think that Courtney Kardashian is being so extra with Travis Barker to make him jealous. Um, because there's all like I get it. You're so into Travis, you're loving this new relationship. Do you need to keep like literally humping him in public whenever you go places. <laughs> right. Like I saw a yeah. photo of them at not scary farm. And she literally was like, he, he was carrying her like a kid. Like she mm -hmm. was like sprawled <laughs> on top of him. He ju she jumped him and they were making out. And that was the photo on the red carpet or the purple carpet or whatever carpet color it was like, I mean, it might be to make, Scott Disick jealous or just to get attention as well. But it's yeah. like, I think it's the latter. I think it's just attention. I think the attention has typically always been on Kim, Kim and, and Kanye Kylie. and Kylie and all of them are sort of laying back in the weeds. They're providing the content. Now it's weird because 
they're older and you would think that they wouldn't, you know, that they would almost shy away from it. Like Ben and Jen, you would think that they would say no, no way. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Wrong. It's like, they missed it. They craved it. They need it. It's just their drug. And I think that I know a lot about that. Yeah. And I, I think it's that addictive. The, I, it, it, yeah, I think that's what it is. And I think that they're, they're both really, into this press at the moment uh, maybe they missed it at some point i don't know but it's you know and it's a new level for both of them you know the main reason the kardashians have been able to sustain for as long as they have is that there's so many of them there's so many yeah so there's always going to be drama or newness or craziness mm -hmm. excitement coming from one of them and they right. all help each other and yeah. they can all make the story bigger and yeah rah, 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 it's rah, almost rah. like the, the 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 thing spun and it landed on her and she's like all right well now i gotta go out and be the content and that's what well, it feels like especially because she's the one that wanted to quit the show for the longest time yeah that's what i mean like she was the one that was sort of that and by the way that's why i liked her because i thought she was kind of cool now i see her slobbering all over this dude constantly <laughs> and i'm just like ugh, thirsty as uh, just parched constantly N needs it. So I'm thirsty. Maybe they're just too. that in love. I'm thirsty too, but you know, <laughs> I'm doing a pod. I'm like losing my mind. I'm so freaking overscheduled. Um, I'm doing a podcast later today called changes. <laughs> and actually I'll, they asked me three questions that they wanted me to answer ahead of time. I'll share them with you briefly. What was the biggest change of your childhood? My father dying. What was the biggest change in your adult life? Me becoming a dad. And what's the change you'd most like to make moving forward? Financial freedom. Yeah, I could have answered all of those questions for you. I mean, what a bore this sounds like. Uh, well, that's the truth. That's how I would answer. <laughs> that's I what I mean, but why do the show? <laughs> I mean, these are questions that have already been asked and answered before. There's no I reason to go listen to that. Well, I mean, I won't even say who the host is, but that's, they've got a podcast and I'm doing the freaking podcast. God I don't bless know. Them. I've got lots of shit to promote, like our podcast. Which and is my made, true 10. You well, forgot. yes. Well, I'm not really, <laughs> I'm not really promoting um, my true 10 on that other podcast because it's for a British, uh, a British personality. Mm -hmm. And I can't ship to the UK, oh. but if you live in the United States <laughs> and you want the best CBD gummies, Pee up the whoring, you can get mine at a very affordable price sent <laughs> to you. Just go to my true 10.com for all the information on my new CBD gummies. That's my, true we got it. What the fuck it is. Next story. Come on. Um, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, speaking of the Kardashians, it was very nice for me to see that Kanye West is making an effort to spend time with his children. Kanye just bought a new Malibu bachelor pad. God, I remember when I first moved to Los Angeles in 2002. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I've always loved real estate and I've always just, you know, we both share that passion. Yeah. Like an architecture, uh, mm -hmm. I love architecture. Like I've always just been fascinated by it. And I've just always known prices, right? Like I remember in the early 2000s, 2002, a really expensive Malibu mansion was maybe $10 million. Mm -hmm. Kanye spent $60 <laughs> million mm -hmm. for his Malibu mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's nice because, you know, he's still got his Wyoming ranch, uh, but I'm just happy to see that he's, willing to spend time and devoted to his kids because Kim's not moving to Wyoming and the yeah. kids are here. There's a fun article you should look up about LA's new million dollar neighborhoods. It was just out maybe the LA times this week, but it's wild because to your thought, you know, I moved here, what, 13, 14 years ago, what you could get then for a million dollars now is like two and a half million dollars in Los Angeles. It's, it doesn't even seem possible, but some people argue that there's the, the amount of land here is so finite that it actually may be undervalued if you compare it to some major cities and such, but 
It's insane. Like Reseda, the there's million dollar houses in Reseda. No one would think that, you know, that neighborhood would crack a million and Englewood, all these neighborhoods and they have, it's insane. That's the average great, house here is a million dollars. That's the, crazy. The, I keep thinking about Las Vegas and the crazy thing mm-hmm. about Vegas is that there's still so much land. There's still so much right. room to build things in Vegas. And they are like, they're constantly building. That's why, like, if I were ever to move to Vegas, Mm -hmm. I cannot buy a crazy expensive house because I don't think that Valley would hold up. But think about Palm Springs, like Palm Springs. We mentioned earlier, Brittany was there. Palm, like I had a house in Palm Springs and it was tiny. I mean, I had a little, it was a tiny little house. It is literally, I should have kept it because it is literally worth double what I sold it for. Double four years ago, double. And there's nothing in that whole community. There used to be like, I drive down the street and you know, every street would have a house or two that was for sale. Nothing. There's nothing available. And it's insane. Like, so maybe, I don't know. I got to think Vegas is next, you know, just people would say, you know, that is an hour flight. It's easy. There's just so much land in Vegas that's still available to build on. You would think Palm Springs too. There's nothing but desert. (laughs) I mean, think behind Palm Springs. It's just desert after desert. But I don't know if that's available to be bought and built on. I don't know why it wouldn't be. You know, they keep building new communities there. It's uh, The government owns it or something. I don't know. I don't know either. I don't don't think there's as much land in Palm Springs. Anyway, from Palm Springs to New York, uh, Wendy Williams is out of the hospital. We still don't know exactly what she was treated for. Uh, It was allegedly for psychiatric services, according to multiple reports. I guess this is good. After she was released from the hospital, she was spotted out shopping in a wheelchair. Okay. If you're still that unwell, like I would maybe consider just staying home or maybe it was. Doesn't she have Amazon Prime? Because, uh, you know, they'll deliver that shit right to your house. Maybe she just wanted to be photographed. I don't know. That could be possibility too. Let's go with that. Um, But according to a new report leading up to this hospitalization, Wendy was drinking alcohol every day. And Mm. allegedly she would drink even while filming her show, which became a big problem. And people were afraid to tell her anything. They were afraid they would get fired. Mm. Um, Yeah. Wishing her well. Mm. Also wishing Rose McGowan well. Um, What's up with Rose? I don't know how I want to describe. I will just state the facts and that's it. There we go. I'm just going to state the facts. She took, she's, well, I don't know if you knew this or not, but Rose McGowan for like at least a year or so has been living in Mexico, Hmm. like in Tulum, I think like near Cancun. Mm -hmm. She posted on Twitter last night that somebody is trying to kill her, that somebody broke into her home. And she says that Democrats are trying to kill her. Okay. (laughs) Or it could just be, you know, people in Mexico know that a Hollywood celebrity lives down there and they're just trying to rob her. Yeah, let's go with that. You know, that's also- There's some money, we're gonna go get some money. Or where they think there's some money. Yeah, there's she probably may not no even... money there. Yeah, no, I don't know. That money is, that boat has sailed. I mean, one of the reasons she moved to Mexico might be because it's cheaper. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Wishing her well. I don't want to speculate what's going on because I don't know what's going on with her. If, if I don't know anything other than what she shared. Yeah. Uh, but I'm not saying I don't believe her either. Like, you know, I don't think she like she she posted this video of her um, front door unhinged where clearly somebody like broke into her house. Like, I don't wow. I don't think she broke into her own house. You know, <laughs> I'm not, I don't think she did that just for publicity or attention. Right. Um, I wish her well. <laughs> I wish her I don't well. think Pete Buttigieg knocked down her front door. 
I mean, I don't think so either. <laughs> I don't like, or, or like Antifa, everybody blaming Antifa for things like. Hey, you said she said Democrats, not even Republicans. No, That's weird. No, I know. Well, she's like a Republican now. Mm, interesting. I don't even, uh, everybody should just blame it. She should have blamed Antifa. <laughs> then more people would have believed it. I knew her back in the day. She was funny. She was a lot of fun. People change. Uh, on to some music news. Country singer Morgan Wallen is in some hot water. Back during uh, that whole controversy where he said the N-word, mm. he had pledged to donate $500,000 to this organization called the Black Music Action Coalition. Mm -hmm. He has not donated $500,000 to them, they claim. He's donated only one hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars, and it's been. Well, he's on a payment program. You know what I mean? <laughs> you get so much for taxes per year. He didn't say he was going to do it all in one lump sum. At least there's some money been deposited. Anyways. Quit bitching. If I was them, I'd be like, I would. If I was him, I'd be like, fuck you. I'm not giving you any more money because you're calling me out on how I'm giving you money. <laughs> if there was no money involved, then okay. But you're saying that there's. A check been cut, you know. Like I said, he's on, he might be on a, a payment fucking plan or something for taxes. I mean, who knows? I don't know. Don't you uh, think that's kind of shady of them to call him out if he's I, written at least one check? Well, maybe they were asked. If they were asked by this outlet, it was Rolling Stone that did this expose. Mm -hmm. Then I don't think that they should lie or give no comment. I don't know if they went, I don't necessarily think they went to the pub to Rolling Stone and said, oh, Morgan Wallen hasn't given yeah, us money. I guess context is important here because it depends on, right. If it, if it's, if they're asked and they say, look, it's charitable, we'll be honest with you because we're a charity and we have to be, that's one thing. But if they said, I'm going to, you know, they raised their hand. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah I, you're probably right. I'm going to assume that's what happened. So there's that. Um, speaking of music, exciting, although it'll it'll be interesting to see how it does. The Fugees have announced that they are back together with Lauren Hill. Yeah, with Lauren Hill. Really? You can't have the Fugees without Lauren Hill. Hey, listen, you can't have the Black Eyed Peas without Fergie anymore. And people attempt it. So you, can. you know what I mean? They're like actually, all of the time. I watched the Black Eyed Peas with that new singer. Her name is J. Ray Soul. Not only did I watch it, I know her name because then I was like looking up her Wikipedia and everything. They performed at the Global Citizen Festival. And oh. I thought that they did a good job. I didn't you know, know they had a new singer. So there you go. Yeah, they've been. she's been with them for at least two years now, like an official member, like Fergie has been replaced. Huh? Actually, it must have I, happened during pandemic because uh, I interviewed them when they had the song out that JLo jumped on as well, whatever the hit ish song was. Uh, and she wasn't in the group yet. And that was a almost almost two years ago. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I went on a hole this weekend and I then was in a Fergie hole and two interesting things came to mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, what the fuck is Fergie up to? Yeah. So she's uh, launched her own wine. I forget the name of it, but she did it in collaboration with her dad, which is nice. Mm -hmm. And then I also saw she's been gone from social media for three months. She's not posted anything. I texted a, one of my gays and my gay said, I did not say this. <laughs> I, it, this did not come. But someone me. in the gay coalition did. Yes. My friend was like rehab question mark. I'm like, oh, I don't know. I hope not. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it is a little odd that she hasn't posted anything in three months. So I wish her well. I hope she's well. And I love Fergie, but do you think that the, uh, Fuji's will be able because they announced they're getting back together and they're doing an arena reunion tour. You think the Fuji's will be able to sell out arenas? I mean, those were big hits, but arenas? I don't but know. It was only one album. Yeah. And Nor Lauren Hill has that notorious reputation for being of never being on time. <laughs> late. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if look, 
if if they did guarantee that we're going to get her doing the miseducation of Lauren Hill and we're hearing well, those, I'm in bonus. Yeah. I'm in because that album and that that body of music together. I mean, even Wyclef stuff, I would. Yeah. If they say we're going to do all of the music, but if they just try to come out there with, you know, the one Fuji's like, sorry, I'm out. No Ready way. or not, here I, here I come. come. <laughs> I mean, you're killing me softly. That was that was just such a moment. I mean, just a, such a moment in music. Great year. What year was that, Perez? Like 90 96? Six, seven? Yeah, six. 96? Maybe six, yeah. 96. I just, Maybe I just got to New York. I think you're right. I think I just got to New York. I want to say it's 96. And actually, I got also into this uh, debate. If Doja Cat announced that she was doing an arena tour do you think she could sell that out mm, maybe i just think it'd be a bad look she doesn't need to do that. she needs to build towards that i wouldn't go too early if i was her that would see i i i'm not saying she couldn't i just think it would be a mistake keep it smaller keep the demand high keep the build on you know well, Dua Lipa's doing an arena tour and she's been around just about the same time as Doja that Cat. That is a bad idea, I think. I don't you think do? she's, yeah, I don't think she's got the, uh, I don't think she's got the catalog yet. She's got what, three hits? She's got a ton of hits. No, hits, I hits. I mean, like songs that everybody knows. New Rules, the the latest one that really didn't become a hit till What's His Fuck was put on it. The Baby. And, um, yeah, like three. I don't. I don't know. I th that's another case of going too soon. I've still never seen her do a great like. Not just. It's kind of like a cheerleader performance. That's all I keep seeing from her. She was great in the Grammys. I she looks hot. Julie, I'll give her that. I just. Mm. I love it for stadiums. I I love her too. I just don't. I just don't know if it's stadium ready. I had the best weekend because I was able to rest. It wasn't too overly busy, and I was watching all these old videos of performers from the '80s and the '90s. And I'm like, fuck! I miss the days when artists used to sing a hundred percent live. Mm -hmm. Nothing that's to my, track. It's kind of my point. Like it just doesn't. Even Madonna, you know what I mean? Like. I don't know. Yeah. Like I was watching a lot of old Gloria Stefan clips, a hundred percent live. Uh, a lot of old Debbie Gibson. I'm in a Debbie Gibson hole after seeing her. I saw you post the Joey uh, McIntyre video of those two doing Greece. That was great. It was so fun. They were, I, I have a bunch of highlights from their show on my, the Perez Hilton YouTube channel. If you guys uh -huh. want to check it out, I keep fantasizing about like life in Vegas. If I move there, like Debbie Gibson could be my neighbor. We could have, we could be besties. <laughs> uh, but then it's like, what if I move to Vegas and it's like New York and I want to move back to LA, then it's like so expensive to move and up uprooting my kids and all of that. Like, uh. yeah. Hmm. Anyways, in more music news, not news, like uh, just to check out, there's this song I think can be a hit by that rapper Lotto. She used to be called Mulatto, then she rebranded and now is just known oh, as- Oh, really? I knew, yeah. her, I knew her music. I didn't know that, she, that she'd changed her name. Okay. She yeah, was, was good too. There was controversy over that name. Uh, uh, she was accused of colorism. Mm. So she decided to change it to just Lotto, L-A-T-T-O. And she's got a song called Big Energy, which samples, oh my God, what's the sample in it? It's driving me crazy. Um, oh, samples Mariah Carey's Fantasy from the 90s, uh, which that song also sampled another song. I forget right. what song that sampled, but um, <laughs> I think she built it off the Mariah sample. Mariah needs to hop on a remix of that because, like, mm. I was waiting for that. Uh, anyways, check that out. Let's take some calls. This is uh, Mike calling from Boston, and this is for you, Booker. Booker, I used to think you were a blowhard and, and an arrogant hater of everything, but the way you came on and defended the greatness of Shit's Creek, well, it completely changed my opinion of you. And that you would talk of character evolution and the organic nature of the show, well, it's made <laughs> you my new hero. And I find it kind of ironic that you being the straight guy and Perez being the gay guy, that you would have to defend the, the show that has the greatest portrayal of a gay relationship in the history of television and cinema or literature or whatever. 
So, Perez, I'm sort of disappointed with your shallowness. I don't think you, uh, I don't think, Perez, that you uh, bully Chris Brown, but this, mm, it's almost, almost bullying of, of a great, great show. Okay, bye. <laughs> Very solid points made during that uh, analogy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will say I am thankful that clearly that person uh, listens to our show. Mm -hmm. um, so thank you for that. Um, it's a great show. Just watch it. Here, another call. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hi, guys. It's Kathy from Colorado. I'm listening to you guys talk about the YouTuber that was missing. Um, the parents absolutely knew. The boyfriend's parents absolutely knew. So I read that when the police finally went to the house, they asked for the boyfriend, and the parents gave the police the uh, business card of their lawyer and told police, contact the lawyer. If they didn't know or he didn't do anything, why you have to provide a lawyer's business card? I don't know. It's very bizarre, the whole thing. Um, on the other hand, there are 27 indigenous women who are missing, and you don't see that on the news. Anyway, love you guys. <laughs> Can't believe the no. number's only 27, to be honest with you. No, I know. I mentioned that last week. I think... Um... I think the whole social media angle definitely made it sexy at the beginning. Oh, it's a, it's a YouTuber, you know, even though she barely had any followers on YouTube and even though she didn't have that many followers on Instagram either, mm -hmm. but, you know, packaging that way made, made more people invested or interested. I don't, I don't know. I agree with you. I agree with the caller. Yeah. Can you fault the press when something catches such heat online and everybody's talking about it and they finally say, okay, well, let's just talk about what everybody else is talking about. But then they go after the press and say, hey, there's a bunch of missing people that you guys aren't covering. It's kind of this weird catch 22, you know, like you want to you want to be talking about what people are talking about. You can't help it that they're not talking about the other 26 missing people, you know, so. Yeah, and that there's still no resolution with that one Gabby Petito story. That guy's still missing, and who knows? Mm. Wow, it's awful. Hey guys, it's Laura. So I'm a big TV whore. So I watched everything, and Shit's Creek is one of the best shows on TV. And I agree with you, Booker. Please don't listen to Perez. You haven't watched the whole thing. Character buildup. You have to care about the characters to care about the show. So there are some laugh out loud moments, so you should try to watch it, Brett. And then also, Ted Lasso Booker, I think, is even more well-written than Schitt's Creek. It is probably one of the best-written shows on TV. I love it, love it, love it too much. Yeah. So anyway, that's a lot of fun. Talk to you guys later. Bye. I'll say this. This could be controversial and it'll almost be as, uh, as, as fought over as we've talked about Schitt's Creek. Ted Lasso is phenomenal. It's a phenomenal show, but it is a little bit overrated because oh, oh. It's, it's, it's very, it is well written. But if you're going to compare it to some of the greatest shows, um, you know, Schitt's Creek, I, I think, is six seasons. This is what did you enjoy more, Ted Lasso or Schitt's Creek? Schitt's Creek. Without oh. question. And I love Ted Lasso. Don't get me wrong. I love, I mean, I'm in the middle of season two right now, which is, we're not even at the end of season two yet. Uh, and it's really good. But that first season was phenomenal. But it's not, it's not like it's a story that you've never heard before. And I guess you could say the same for Shit's Creek. Family loses it all, has to move to a crap town. You know, they move into this hotel, which is funny and, you know, run this business. But I tell you, Schitt's Creek's just about the evolution of the family, them becoming a family for being such pukey people. They were horrible, horrible people. And by the end of them, you love each and every one of them for, for their flaws and everything. It's a, it's, it really is a great show. They did such a 
phenomenal job. But yeah, Schitt's Creek deserves all of the accolades that it got. It's uh, it's well done. Last call. Hi, this is Erica calling from Miami. So I've been a listener for a few years now, and I said, Thank okay, you. well, let me check out this YouTube link and um, check out a video of you guys. I've never seen that before. And God, please don't ever make me do that again. <laughs> I can sit through traffic listening to you guys, but I cannot sit for an hour just staring at two faces talking to each other. It, it just doesn't work for me. Also, um, Perez, your voice does match your face. So I've always imagined you as a talker with hands. Um, but Booker, God, you look like Pepe Le Pew with the mustache <laughs> and the voice does not match. You have such a radio voice, which is very sexy, but I just did not see it matching your face. No, no offense. You're so cute. Yeah, okay. But a little Pepe Le Pew-ish. Pepe anyway, Le Pew. I love you guys. You keep doing a great job. I have no question. I just wanted to comment on stop, stop uh, telling me to watch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm with her. First of all, it's funny. Pepe Le Pew is the perfect analogy of me. I am French. I, I do have the stupid mustache. I get it. I can see where she got that from. That's funny to me. And I wholeheartedly agree with her. I think this show fucking blows on camera. I hate it. If we would stop it tomorrow, I, I couldn't be happier. I only do this to appease Perez. Matter of fact, I don't make any money from it at all. Zero dollars. It's on his YouTube channel. I don't make anything from it. I'm with you. It fucking blows. The audio version is so much better. It's Podcast edited better. Podcast One was the one who said we should do this and that it helps them with their ad sales. Podcast One. What do they know? They know. I'm with her. I'm do. just. I'm just gonna get back to the opinion of hers. I agree wholeheartedly. This fucking sucks. And Podcast One, it fucking sucks. <laughs> well, so the, all, well, we have to do what all the other podcasts do. Almost all other top podcasts now are on video. Yeah. Okay. It's the truth. I believe you. It's the truth. The top. I don't. Whenever, when anybody starts a sentence with, it's what everybody else does. You know, that's the biggest turnoff you could ever say to Chris Booker. It's I. I fucking hate doing what everybody else does. It. I. I'd rather do. One thing great, then 42 things okay. And I feel like this audio, video version is just okay. It's not well done. It's, it's, it's it just, she's right. Well, it's staring at two it. people and you people could, don't have to. That's what I mean. Could, I just agree with but her. That's to that, all. But to that woman, they can, she could listen to the, the YouTube version the same way that she listens to the other version. And, and we would get the views. Was Pepe Le Pew gay? No. You don't think he was, or was he like really into girls? He was really, he was really into, into, girls. into girls, right? But was he a skunk? He was a skunk, right? Yes. And he was inappropriate. They've kind of phased out that character. <laughs> I am fucking Pepe Le Pew. I love it. He was sexually, he was, sex, he was a sexual abuser. <laughs> oh, he was? Well, now we view it through that lens. Yes. Yeah. A lot of people like, you know, kiss, he would kiss women without permission. <laughs> it seems fun. <laughs> I look like Pepe Le Pew. I love it. Well, all right. Peppy out. Well, <laughs> thank you guys for listening and watching. If, oh, I don't think we mentioned our number. Call us 800 721 1185. 800 721 1185. We'll see you guys next week. Bye, guys. See you.